Hi, this is Mariah Gullo from The Hollywood Reporter, and I'm in studio with Vicki Creeps today. Hi, Vicki. How are you? Hello. Good. Um, we're here to talk about The Phantom Thread, which is getting a lot of attention. Um, I just wanted to say that I've seen it three times. Um, I feel like the first time you see it for the plot twists, yeah. which there always will be with a P.T. Anderson movie. The second time, you get to really get into the performances because now you know what's mm -hmm. going to happen. Mm -hmm. And then the third time is just like taking in the set pieces yeah. and all the beautiful camera angles. Yeah, and I would say the eighth time, you understand. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. By the eighth time, yeah. you understand. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's so amazing to try to get into the head of your character, Alma. Like, she's so interesting. Like, mm. you go into this movie and you're like, oh, there's another very powerful man and his new muse mm -hmm. and you just think oh I know the way this is gonna go mm -hmm. and it doesn't it doesn't mm -hmm. this is a character who really kind of uh, commands a lot of attention in the movie yes yeah. yeah, she's even for me and I know Alma but even for me Alma is so I, I realize now when I talk about her you know what she actually is in as a as a whole and mm. she's so out of the box really like out of any kind of way that you would think you could define a woman you know it's almost yeah. as if she exists in between being a woman and a not a man but a not woman you know it's like right. I don't know she's yeah she's just free if if we get to talk to her talk about her character as a whole right just uh, knowing that we yeah. have both seen the movie and know what happens um, does she, is there like a mission statement? Is there like a, a, a core definition of who she is that you really feel you tapped into? Like, do you, did you have like, you know, a definition for that? No, I think what I just said is closest that she's, she doesn't need a definition to right. be. Right. And because she doesn't need a definition, she can be so strong. Yeah. Um, if, if I ever understood her as some kind of, figure then it was only um, due to the time she lives in you know mm -hmm. or the social upbringing she had right okay you know, so she like is her backstory to, basically yeah because yeah. it was different back then and the nowadays you know as, as mm -hmm. a woman you when you were a woman in the 50s that meant many things you you, you couldn't just be who you wanted to be in a way you know you mm -hmm. had to apply to very many rules and, and you know expectations and so what's interesting is that she does apply to all of this, mm -hmm. or like, not apply. I always look for words. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, she fit. She fits into the mold of a fifties woman. Yes, and exactly, and even very. Um, um, she's good at it, you know. Mm -hmm. She's she's like a good schoolgirl. Like I mean, she's not questioning right. to to be this fifties woman. She. Mm -hmm. she that's what she is. She's a waitress. Mm -hmm. She's learned to be a waitress and to serve other people and to, you know, as a working class woman, to have her position. She's not questioning this position, but she doesn't need to because she doesn't need this definition. Mm -hmm. and so it makes her free, and, and this makes her strong. Mm -hmm. Not her background or her money or whatever. Right. Yeah. Right, and a lot of a lot of her backstory was kind of stripped away by editing, yeah. which kind of gives her uh, even more of a very present character. Yeah, um, and then also with uh, uh, with P. T. Anderson's filmmaking style, you you didn't meet Daniel Day Lewis until the first day that you filmed with him. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, I met him in London. We we met to read the script. Once. Oh, okay. Yes. Right. But and you that, didn't rehearse. We didn't rehearse at right. all. Um, I just had to trust Paul. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't feel like I did anything, really. I just trusted Paul. I listened what was happening around me, and I tried to answer as honest as I could, in a way. Mm -hmm. um, and, and everything what I knew was what I gave Alma as a backstory, you know, where she came from. And mm. for this, I really um, took it from my grandmother. You know, I tried to understand wow. what it means to to be a young woman in the war, you know, and then seeing people die around you, close family members, and having to leave your country, go to a new country, be an immigrant, you know. All of this explains of why she's how she is. Mm, how adaptable she is. Yes. 
and yeah. and and ready to be submissive in a way because in the mm -hmm. beginning she is submissive as you say you know you watch the movie and you think oh another one you know like this like a poor poor girl and she's going to be lost or what what is he going to do to her and mm -hmm. um but ha keeps her own strength like a secret almost you know? mm, yeah, yeah yeah and you said before that when you were creating her character or, or trying to get into her that you filled her with emptiness yeah um what what did that entail like what um i i did it f intuitively in one hand did it because I knew I would meet someone who's a method actor and didn't know much mm. about method acting and I didn't want to know much because I knew Alma has to be very free. So I tried to become empty and it, 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 it's like meditation almost, you know, mm. when you try to, to forget who you are but more who you want to be. So I had to try and forget what I want to be as an actress or who I right. want to be as an actress, what kind of movie I would like to do or you know, what it means being an actress in a Paul Thomas Anderson movie, all these mm. ideas I try to get rid of and create like a silence. Mm. Did yeah. that work more on certain days than others? Did you have your good days and your bad days? Because it feels like yeah. the idea of kind of emptying out all of your expectations well, um, the emptying could be out, tough from day to day. Yes, it the emptying out was for the beginning really. Yeah. And then as soon as Alma enters the world, you know, it was filling up and, oh. you know, and then it was very soon, it was very full. Mm -hmm. And then it meant more trying to move around mm -hmm. all of the stuff. So what I mean by what she was filled up was his life, his, you know, his house, his clothes, his art, his people, you know, his everything, like the world he was living in um, as this creator. And she had to live in this world. Mm -hmm. And so she had to move around all these uh, little, like on a checkboard, you know. Mm -hmm. You say chess, chess, yeah. these little chess figurines. And uh, and then it was more being someone in a in a room that's so full that you cannot breathe. Mm -hmm. You know, it was it took most of my energy went into being so submissive and you know restrained and you know mm -hmm. really almost holding my breath and just telling the story in my eyes, you know, because there was no way I, I could move or go being with Reynolds mm -hmm. and Woodcock. So that's interesting that I made her empty in the beginning and then it was so full. Yeah, and and that way the tension is sh kind yeah. of showing in the yeah. later scenes. Yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. Um, so I saw like a, a parallel between uh, your character and like what is act was actually going on for you as an actress. Um, your character is like an ingenue, the new muse, the new person, and the house of Woodcock is this brother or sister who work really closely and tightly together. Mm -hmm. And I felt like there was kind of a parallel between that and P.T. Anderson and Daniel Day-Lewis, yeah. and their partnership is so yeah. interconnected. How did it feel to kind of st start working with a team that's so interconnected already? Hmm. When I first met them, it, 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 the great thing that happened between the three of us, I, I would say, is we met and it didn't feel like getting to know someone new, but more like seeing someone again hmm. you know, haven't seen for a long time. Yeah. I don't know why that was like this. So this helped me to try and trust that it's going to be fine. Yeah. <laughs> but um, then going to the set, because we didn't rehearse, and being at the set, it was very, um, like like for Alma, it was very um, hard also to mm -hmm. work in a place where people are so, you know, I don't know how, I wouldn't say they are sure of what they do because I think Paul and Daniel are both open to to the fact that as a as an actor, as a, as a creator, you never really know what you're doing. You're mm -hmm. always in a quest for something, you're always searching. Um, but still, you know, only by the fact that they've been doing it for such a long time, it gives them a, a whole different approach. And, you know, that's something I could feel. In, and I, I don't know, I just pretended that I wasn't scared. Mm, that's <laughs> good. <laughs> um, it's funny that Daniel Day-Lewis has such a um, 
such a reputation. Um, and but then every time you see him in interviews, he seems so warm and nice. Mm. Um, did what what experience did you have with him? Well, as Reynolds Woodcock, uh, he was you know very intense because uh. Reynolds is very intense. Right. But um, I I didn't have a. I didn't have the experience everyone expected to. I mean, mm. it's not like he he didn't break. I mean, of course, that's what he does. He doesn't break character, so he is Reynolds Woodcock. But once you find your way with Reynolds Woodcock, it's fine. And uh -huh. in between the <laughs> takes, it's not like you know he's going to be mean to me as mm -hmm. he, he would be mean in the scene to mm -hmm. Alma. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you, a couple of times, you went and asked Reynolds off camera questions. Mm. Um, there was one story about yeah. a costume that yeah, you wanted yeah. to wear, or yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, I started to realize that Reynolds Woodcock had, uh, because he was very intense. People were, you know, behaving around him. You know, uh -huh. like this. Oh, he said this. Oh, we cannot. And uh, very early on, I, 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 I wasn't ready to accept. You know, I was like, what? But, you know, I, I have to know it by myself, you know, I'm not going to accept just knowing it like this. So there was one thing, um, was that he was always in his room and people were always whispering, he's, he's there or he's coming or he's... Uh -huh. And I was like, what? What are they all whispering, you know? <laughs> Why, is he, is he sick or what? <laughs> and, no, but he's in his green room. And, yeah, but I want to ask a question. No, but you cannot go. What? So <laughs> I just went over the grass and I went in the house up the stairs, knocked at the door and asked my question. <laughs> so, you see, it, everything, a lot of it was rounded. So the same thing was, uh, one day I asked the costume designer, why do we not have strapless dresses? And mm -hmm. in the whole movie, it's so 50s, it's so nice. Mm -hmm. No, um, Reynolds uh, Woodcock uh, wouldn't do that because he would find it vulgar. Mm -hmm. I wasn't ready to accept it, so I we went to <laughs> Reynolds Woodcock and I asked, so you find that vulgar? And then he said, no, uh, I didn't say, or I don't remember what he exactly said, but what came out was that he said he, he didn't mean it for Alma. He said it right. would be different for you. So yes. I went back to the costume designer and I said, yeah, we can we can do strapless. Yes, Reynolds says it's okay. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's okay for Alma. She's a true lady. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so great. It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was it like um, getting costume for all of those dresses? I assume it must have been a very intense period of costuming. Yeah. I mean, have you ever worn that many changes of clothes for a no. job? No. Yeah. Not, not nearly. I mean, I, I have done period drama, but if there was never a movie that only had the possibility to do this, you know. And all my characters, I think many of them were poor. So when you're poor, <laughs> you only have one dress, right. you know. Right. And and uh, so no, that was uh, the first time, and it was a it was a job on its own to learn yeah. to learn how to wear the dresses and to behave mm -hmm. like I should, and you know, like in the fifties, and <gasps> it was very. Uh, t uh, tiring, like, yeah. really like, ugh. Did you pick up any good tips for how to present yourself when you're wearing something like a strapless gown? Is there a certain... No, I think it was the dress itself that was always telling very strongly how you should wear it. Ah, Because, yes. you know, in some They're dresses... so structured. You, yeah, exactly. You have, like, a corset or you have a, a suspender belt or... How, how does it feel to wear l lace or silk? It gives mm. you a different feeling, you know? Mm -hmm. Like... If you have a bodice like this and you're going to do like this, then everything is going to oh, be... it's going to spill out the top. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or the same with shoes, you know, you cannot just walk like you walk in trainers or it will just... It won't look very good. <laughs> good. Yeah. So I think the clothes themselves, they were telling me what to do. Amazing. Yeah. Um, so uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, the reveal. Um, I know we we don't want to ruin anything for the viewers. Yeah. They should go out and see the movie themselves. But there's, I don't. A lot of people I don't think will, when they see this movie, they're gonna think, oh, it's a period piece. But there is a. How would you call this? I want to say it's like, metaphorically kinky twist. Yeah. <laughs> um, what I mean, how did you feel to like? 
uh, take on a role like that. I mean, this is yeah. a like, unique experience to kind of go into the world of like, um, I don't know, like twist, twisted minds. Yeah, or a, yeah, yeah. You know? Well, I, I, I didn't know. But there's how. nothing vulgar about it. No. As Reynolds Woodcock would say. <laughs> yeah, so I think I was just trusting Paul again and, and that, it, that it would be right for some reason. And it was difficult to understand how you could come to such a twist. Mm -hmm. Why would someone come up with this? Why would someone go this way and actually do this? You know, I really had to understand because I, I, I would never do it, you know, myself. And then I just accepted that I wouldn't understand. And then I just accepted that I don't have to understand. Okay. And I, I just went with my intuition trying to feel why someone would do this. And I found that, you know, if you love someone, I think you do the weirdest things <laughs> yeah, alone or together. You know? And I think that's only what it's portraying. It's just yeah. saying, you know, how weird it can become when you're in love, but also how beautiful it can become, but mm. also how difficult it can be. And, you know, there's no rule. There's no, there's nothing that doesn't happen at home when people are alone. Yeah, you know? that's true. That's true, and it, it does allow people to kind of draw their own conclusions. Yeah, and I think this is just a playful way of telling this. <laughs> it's very lovely. Um, so I have four more questions for you mm -hmm. before I let you go. Um, this is our first, best, last, worst questions. Um, so the first job uh, that made you think, I've made it, now I've finally made it. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the job where you actually made it. It mm -hmm. hasn't happened yet. <laughs> I, I Always did, looking forward. This is the first movie I did where people tell me that this is... Mm. How does it feel that now you are... Well, it doesn't feel anything except that you keep asking me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I haven't had this. Uh, no. You haven't had the moment. Um, best costume you've had to wear for a job. Is there a, a particular costume or maybe a dress from this movie that really... In this movie there were many beautiful dresses and I don't know what the best costume I ever wore. Maybe I think the, the clothes Alma's wearing when she goes on the mountain. Um. The mountaineer clothes. I think that was the best costume. Nice. Yeah. Um, the last time you made a mistake and how did you fix it? Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Probably two minutes ago <laughs> sitting like this on the, on the chair. How did I fix it? Like this. <laughs> kid. Uh, worst audition experience. Worst audition experience. Um, oh, ha. That, oh, yeah. Once I went to an audition, I will not tell you what it was, but I honestly realized while I was there that I didn't read the script. Oh, no. <laughs> and I was sitting there and I realized, oh, <laughs> fuck, I didn't read the script. But I think it wasn't meant to be, so maybe that's why. Definitely. Vicky Creeps, thank you so much. That um, was a good way of saying my name. Oh, wow. really? Creeps, yeah. Oh. Creeps, creeps. Thank you so yeah. much. Uh, well, the movie is Phantom Thread, and uh, thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you during award season. Thank you. <laughs>